do my eyes deceive me? I thought for a second that I just saw someone here at my wedding who certainly doesn't belong one bit. I thought for just a brief moment that I saw some dirty little poor person who had snuck into my wedding even though they really should know better. Um, well, you're sending these messages to me, so I guess I can only assume I'm who you're referring to, right? Unless you're saying there's another sad poor person here just like me. Maybe we could go and look for them together, and then I could have a friend at this wedding. Wouldn't that be nice? Are you acting stupid, or are you really just this dense? Of course I'm talking about you. Who else would I even be talking about? <laughs> and I can't believe you actually just admitted that you were poor, but I guess that means at least you know your place. So good for you. I thought that all poor people like you were too stupid to be aware of who they were. So at least you have that going for you. Oh, well, it would be kind of hard for me to forget, what with how often you're always reminding me of it. So I guess I have you to thank for telling me just how poor I am. I mean, I never once really thought of myself as poor before, but then I met you and you made sure to put me in my place. So I'm just so grateful that I've had the chance to be told over and over and over again about how I'm a poor nobody. Well, I'm surprised that you had never been able to figure it out yourself. After all, everyone else was thinking it. I suppose it really was just a matter of time. <laughs> I mean, don't you think it's just a little bit sad? Your brother is going to become a doctor and you only have a high school diploma. I guess Michael must have gotten all the brains in the family, huh? Meanwhile, you got... Well, I don't think you really got anything, if I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah, you are right about that. I was never really good at studying in school when I was a student. I think everyone around me always saw that maybe I just wasn't cut out for a system like that. And because of that, even though I was the older sister, it always felt a bit strange being there for all of Michael's accomplishments. Aw, I'm sure it did. You probably felt like your life had barely even started, and yet you were already being completely overshadowed by your brother, I bet. <laughs> Well, I just thought that you might be able to sympathize with me on the point, given that you're unemployed and all that. Excuse me? And just what is that supposed to mean, huh? Is that supposed to be a dig on me? Well, <laughs> nice try, but those kinds of insults aren't going to work on me. Unlike you, I simply don't have to work, and that's why I don't have a job. It's really just that simple. But if you really must know, even when I was working, I always got high marks for my performance and was a model employee. So it's not like I can't, I just choose not to. Wow, that's amazing. That really is so cool that you wanted to give up a career in financial independence all because you're getting married. I know what you're getting at, but like I already told you, it simply won't work on me. Because at the end of the day, I know that you're just a sad, poor, stupid little poor person who doesn't have an ounce of the work experience that I do. So I suppose even trying to explain why I do the things I do to someone like you is really just pointless, isn't it? Anyways, there's actually something that I wanted to ask of you. A little favor, if you will. Really? You want to ask me a favor? Well, please, by all means, tell me what it is. I mean, I'm just dying to do anything you ask of me as a lowly poor person. Well, good. I'm glad that you understand your place is to do as you're told by your superiors. But I was wondering if I could ask you to not sit at the table reserved for family. You don't want me to sit at the table where the rest of our family is going to be sitting? I don't really know if you understand what you're asking. After all, you do know that I'm basically all the family that Michael has left, don't you? And sitting at the table for a wedding is important since it represents the two families that are being tied together as one through the wedding. Well, that's exactly the issue. You see, if everyone at the table realizes that the only family that Michael has is you... <laughs> Well, I'm just afraid that my family will start to apply all of the negative things about you to Michael and start judging him for his sister. Do you understand? Oh, don't worry about that. I've already made plans to rent a really pretty dress for the wedding. I know that I may not be a person of high standing or class, but I promise to at least look like one for the wedding. Surely you can grin and bear through my presence at the table while you're standing up on the altar with Michael, right? 
You really expect me to trust that you know how to pick a dress that would be good enough for the kind of wedding that Michael and I are going to have? I seriously doubt that you would know what good taste was if you got hit upside the head with a Louis Vuitton bag. <laughs> Anyways, I don't care how good you could make yourself look. The fact of the matter is that the moment you opened your mouth, everyone would realize what an uneducated little street urchin you were. I mean, do you even know in what order you're supposed to be using the forks and knives when there are more than one of them by the plate? Do you even know how to use a fork and knife, period? Or do you just eat with your hands and then savor the flavor left on your fingers like some kind of Neanderthal? Oh, don't worry. I think I know that one at least. You use the knife to do the cutty bits, and then you use the fork when you need to poke things, right? Wow, don't pop a blood vessel in your head trying to keep that straight, okay? But like I said, you are not going to be eating at the family table. Instead, I thought that we would just put you outside in the hall with a plate of food. That way you'll be away from everyone else and can make all the mess you want. Doesn't that sound nice? You mean you would really have me eat in the hallway at my own brother's wedding? Of course. I mean, the fact of the matter is that no one at the wedding is going to want to eat with you anyways, though. I'm sorry, but you just aren't going to fit in with all the fancy and well-dressed people who are going to be coming to the wedding, and I think that you just have to accept that. Nobody even wants to see you at the wedding, let alone share a table and talk with you. I see. Well, then maybe the least you could do is let me just sit cross-legged in the aisle and eat there instead of in the hallway. I mean, I'm quite small and don't take up that much space anyways. Surely that would be okay, right? No, because I am telling you that people don't even want to see you at the wedding. The less you can be in the back of people's minds, the better. It's best if you just wouldn't come at all, really. But since that isn't going to happen, we just have to make arrangements so that the least number of people know that you even exist. Besides, what would you even do at a table with other people? It would be a total waste for you. I doubt that you even know how to talk to upper-class people like us. You're telling me that you're really serious about this? Even though I came all the way here to be present for my brother's wedding? You're really not even going to let me sit at the family table just because you have some weird person grudge against me? Now, now, Ren, I think you're forgetting something very, very important here. It's not just Michael's wedding, it's also my wedding. You do realize that, don't you? And everyone knows that on the day of a wedding, the wife is far more important than the husband in terms of trying to appease her. And as my future sister-in-law, that should mean that you wanted to do everything to give me what I want today, right? Well, I guess you're not exactly wrong about any of what you've just said. But still, I can't help but feel like this isn't exactly fair. Well, all I'm saying is that if we look at who's invited who, then I think you'll find that you have to agree with me. I have so many people here from my side of the family and who I've invited here, right? Meanwhile, you and your brother are basically it as far as Michael's side goes, which pretty much means that all of the wedding gifts and cash that we get are going to be from my guests, right? Well, again, I guess that's a point that I can't really refute exactly. That's right. So those are just more reasons why it's just better for everyone if you are neither seen nor heard or talked about at all. I mean, if people know that you're Michael's sister, then they're going to start asking where the rest of the family is, don't you think so? So basically, you are going to save everyone a lot of hassle if you just stay in the hallway and out of our way. I see. Well, I guess if you really feel that strongly about me doing that, then I don't really have any choice in the matter, do I? That's more like it. Although you really should have just listened to me and agreed with me in the first place. We would have saved so much time. Hey, Ren. Really sorry to bug you in the middle of my wedding. I'm sure you have a good reason for what you were doing, but why are you in the hallway right now? Did I miss something? I mean... I think that the hallway is for the staff to use and less the wedding guests like you, you know? Michael? Did you really see me in the hallway? What were you doing out there? What's going on with the wedding and the ceremony? Well, that's just it. I was waiting for things to start and realized that you weren't anywhere to be seen, so 
I came out to come and look for you. I mean, I thought that you were going to give a speech today, so I didn't want you to be absent for that, you know? And then that's when I heard that someone mentioned one of the guests in the hallway, and I came to find that it was you. But, I mean, this is what you wanted me to do, isn't it? Sorry, what? You think that I want you to be sitting out in the hallway? What are you talking about? I just, well, I didn't want to embarrass you. I didn't want people to be asking about why I was the only guest that you invited to your wedding. I'm sorry, but I'm still kind of confused. Why would I even care about that? Where's all of this coming from right now? I mean, it's not like it doesn't make any sense to me, you know? I understand it. After all, you're a doctor and making tons of money, and I'm barely making enough to get by. I'm just a poor moron, let's face it. I don't belong at your wedding with all those fancy people. I wouldn't even know what to talk about with them. Wait a second, Ren. Are you serious? I'm really sorry that that's bothering you so much right now, but I hope you know that I don't care about any of that. I mean, you're my older sister, and that's the only thing that matters to me. Why on earth would I be embarrassed to have a sister like you? I love you, you know that? Just where did you even get this idea that I would be embarrassed to have you at my wedding in the first place? Well, Lisa told me that you were talking about how embarrassed you were going to be having me at your wedding. Did Lisa really say that to you? Yeah, she basically made me feel like you were thinking all of this, but were just being too kind to tell me. But d don't worry. I really don't need you to worry about me at all. I'm totally fine, I swear. I know that I need to stay out of your way and just let the wedding go on undisturbed. Lisa... I don't really know any other way to make this more clear, but if Lisa really said all that to you, then she has no idea what she's talking about at all. I mean, I'm certainly not embarrassed by you, and I want you at my wedding more than any other guest here. In fact, I'm proud to have you as my sister, and I want everyone to know. But that isn't what Lisa said to me at all. Ren, if I really felt that way about you, then why would I even invite you to the wedding in the first place? I mean, if you being here was really going to embarrass me, which it isn't at all, then why would I even go through the trouble of having you here? Just doesn't add up, right? But what I'm most concerned about is why on earth Lisa would even say something like that to you. I mean, what could she have been thinking? And now here I am, already throwing wrenches into your wedding. I know that you mean well by saying all of this to me, but I want you to know that I really am sorry for ruining your wedding like this. Rin. You didn't do anything wrong, okay? It's Lisa who is in the wrong here, and I'm not going to let her get away with this. Hey there, Ren. I was just curious if you were enjoying the plate that I had sent out to you in the hallway. Was it nice sitting on the floor and eating your meal like that? <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you so, so much for asking. The food was just great, yeah. You guys really didn't skimp at all on the catering. Well, I want you to know that I really am sorry about earlier, you know, what with the me ripping up your dress like that. <laughs> oh, so you did do it on purpose then. I had thought that you might have. I mean, I was pretty surprised when you suddenly flew out into the hall just to try and rip apart the clothes that I was wearing. Well, thankfully, it wasn't like it was even a nice dress to begin with, right? I mean, could you imagine if someone tried to do that to an actually nice dress like mine? But don't worry, I promise that I'll buy you something actually nice and worth wearing at some point in the future. And just where are you right now? I popped my head out into the hall to see if you were still there and I couldn't see you. Oh, right. Well, that's because I just stepped away to go and use the bathroom, that's all. Still, though, you really just should have known better, don't you think? I mean, did you really think that you belonged in a place like this? Don't you realize that you're an outsider? Nobody wants you here. <laughs> Half the reason I wanted you out in the hall was so that the people at the table wouldn't have to be subjected to sitting with you. How dare you treat the person to whom I owe so much like that? Excuse me? What are you talking about right now? Who are you even talking about? I don't get it, Lisa. Do you really have no idea at all what you've done? I mean, you really chased my sister out of our own wedding and are making her sit out in the hall? What is the matter with you? What is the matter with me? I know that you can't really be serious about that, right? I mean, didn't you see the way that she was dressed? 
I was talking to her earlier and she was telling me all about how she had gone out and gotten some fancy dress to wear to our wedding, but she showed up in rags. Surely you must have noticed that too, right, Michael? You don't really think she was dressed up nicely for the wedding, do you? Wait a second. Let me try and get this straight then. Are you telling me that the reason you kicked my own sister out of our wedding was because you didn't like her dress? But I just... Of course that wasn't the only reason. There's also the fact that your sister just wouldn't fit in. I mean, what would she even talk to other people there about? I just... You know what I mean, don't you? Do you really think that your sister fits in with the guests that I've invited at all? What do you mean? Why does it matter if she fits in? It's not a social club or something, it's our wedding and everyone here is here for us. Right, but I just mean that she only has her high school diploma. Don't you see how she would just totally clash with the atmosphere of the wedding? Surely you can see the point I'm trying to make here, right? What on earth are you talking about? Do you really think that you need a break? I don't even know what to say to you. But I was just trying to think of you. And when it seemed like Ren was finally starting to listen to what I had to say, she finally seemed to give in when I told her this was what you wanted. And you didn't think that I would be upset over you lying to my sister for my sake? But, I mean, I thought that you and Ren didn't even get along all that well to begin with. You guys haven't even seen each other for years before this, isn't that right? That's only because Ren lives and works so far away. It isn't that I don't want to talk to her or see her or anything like that. We've talked about this. But I really did think that it was because you two didn't get along. Well, that isn't the case at all. I mean, I owe her so much, actually. You know that Ren and I were only raised by mom until I was in middle school when she died? After that, my sister had to take on all of mom's duties and give up her dreams just to take care of us both. She raised me all the way until I finished high school. Oh. Well, I guess that I just never really realized fully. Well then, well, I don't see how that can be when I explain this to you over and over again. Or was I in the wrong for thinking that you were actually listening to what I was saying? No, it isn't like that at all, I swear to you. I just, I guess I just forgot with so much going on about the wedding, but I remember you saying all of that now. Don't lie to me, Lisa. I know that you're only remembering because I'm saying it now. But now I see that in spite of all of that, you're just throwing out my sister because you don't like her. Please, you have to believe me. It isn't like that at all. Do you know what? I don't think that I can do this. The wedding is off. I'm going to take Ren and we are going home. Wait, no, please don't go. I'm begging you. You have to rethink this, Michael, please. I've changed my mind. Your sister can be in our wedding. Tell her to come in. Please, I've changed my mind. It's okay. I really don't mind at all. You can't just call off the wedding. <laughs> Ren, are you there? I just wanted to let you know that I've done a lot of thinking about it, and I think I want you to be at the wedding after all. Oh, really? You mean it? What changed for you? And here I was getting used to sitting out here. It was nice and quiet, and the staff keep the floor here so clean. It's great, actually. N no, please... We can't have my sister-in-law out in the hallway. You have to come inside. I insist. Please, I think that you and Michael and I all just need to sit down and talk a bit. Hold on a second. Don't tell me that Michael got mad at you about this, did he? Wait, I don't... How did you know that? Well, Michael actually stepped out in the hallway earlier. He asked me what I was doing out here, and when I explained it to him, he got really mad. I had a feeling that he might have done something, but I get the feeling that you're taking the brunt of his anger right now. No, it's nothing like that at all, honestly. I just... Well, I mean, you're my husband's sister, so since we're going to be family, obviously you should be there for the wedding. Please, I was so stupid to even ask you to sit out there. Yeah, I mean, I don't really understand why you thought it was a good idea to do that either. What do you mean? Well, obviously the groom is going to get upset if you're throwing his family out of the wedding. Obviously, I don't mind obliging you, but I guess because I did, Michael finally realized the kind of person you really are. So I guess that's one good thing to come out of this. Oh, wait a second. Is this really Lisa I'm talking to right now? That's right. It's your poor, stupid sister-in-law, Lisa. But I guess if I'm the stupid one, then that just begs the question of what you are. 
I guess that's exactly what Michael is finding out right now, though. Wait, so you were just pretending to be stupid this whole time? I wouldn't say pretending so much as I just wanted to see how long you would really think I was going to go along with everything you were saying. But then, what about the dress? Did you really pick a dress that ugly on purpose? I will say that you got me there. I did choose that dress knowing that you were going to pick on me for it. But I didn't think you would go so far as to attack me over it. Then you tricked me! I don't believe it! Well, I guess you have no choice now that Michael tells me the wedding is off. Thank goodness is all I can say, though. I would hate to be a part of your family and you mine. Wait, uh, just hold on for a second. I mean, I know that I might have overreacted a little, but I really do love Michael and I really do want to get married to him. I see. And you thought that throwing me out in the hallway was going to be good for that? In fact... I actually heard a bit about the drama that was unfolding inside the wedding hall earlier. What do you mean? You really heard all that? Well, it was hard not to when I was sitting out in this quiet hall. But, man, your dad was really laying into you. I bet every single guest at your wedding heard what he was saying. Going on and on about how you were so close to marrying a doctor and you screwed it all up. He even said that he bought a new car because he was hoping to rope my brother into helping him pay for it. And then he told you that you were going to have to help him pay it off instead. No, that didn't have anything to do with our wedding at all. Please, you have to help me. I really wasn't after Michael's money at all. But it's true that you do have a lot of debt, don't you? Are you telling me that your plan wasn't to have my brother help you? You even heard my dad yelling about my debt? That's right. You thought you were kicking me out of the wedding, but you basically gave me the best seat in the house. All I had to do was put my ear up against the wall and I could hear everything clear as day. Anyways, I suppose that's really all there is to say about this, yes? Wait, no, please, we're not through here. Well, I'm not sure what else there is to talk about, except of course for the fact that you'll be paying for all of the wedding preparations. And you'll probably have to return all the wedding gifts, too. Hey, Ren. I really just wanted to say again how sorry I am for everything that you had to go through today. I mean, I really just had no idea that Lisa was that bad, you know? How could she have thought that was ever okay? Well, I'm just glad that you realized all of this before the two of you got married. I was wondering how long it was going to take you to realize just the kind of person that Lisa really was. You mean that you've really had your suspicions about Lisa this whole time? Pretty much. I think ever since we first met, she had always acted like she was so much better than me. And I just remember thinking that I couldn't believe that you were really going to marry this woman. I mean, I guess I just assumed that you being a doctor would have given you a better eye for people like her. I see what you mean, but I really did think that she was a sweet girl. She had always been so kind to me. But... I just can't believe that you let yourself be insulted and subjected yourself to her treatment of you for, for my sake. Well, you're my brother, and I wasn't going to try and open any can of worms until you found out for yourself. Anyways, I'm just glad that you saw that I did. I guess all's well that ends well, really. You know, this is just another reason why I respect you so much, Ren. You are really a tough person. I really don't think that I could have ever gotten to where I am in life without your help. Yeah, I guess you're right. I am pretty amazing now that I think about it. But don't sell yourself short. After all, it was you doing all the hard work of getting through med school. Ren, thank you so much. I know I don't say it enough. You know, for my speech, I really did want to talk about how proud I am of how hard you worked to achieve your goals. But maybe I'll just hold off on telling exactly what I wanted to say until you find the right person. You're right, but I can't wait to hear that speech. Well, you'll hear it, but just know that you don't have to feel bad for me today. I'm always going to be there for you, no matter what. But that's just why I do feel so bad and why I'm so grateful for you. It's no problem at all. I mean, thank you so much for caring about me. I'm glad that after all these years, we can still be so close. I mean, you even hung up some of my art as decorations for your wedding. You have no idea how touched I was at seeing that. I really enjoy those drawings and I want you to know that. Even Lisa's guests were all admiring them and wondering about who their artist was. 
So thanks again for letting me hang them up for free. I really appreciate it. But I also really do think that you're just a stellar artist. But you had to pull all of that aside to raise me. Well, it's not like I've completely given up on my dreams of being an artist, you know. Yes, I had to set them aside for more important things, like you, but I still practice every day and I know I'll make it big one day. You don't know how much it means that you just said that to me. I really am so lucky to have you as my sister. Thank you so much for everything today, Ren. I really just can't say that enough. Well, I guess I just have to say that I'm looking forward to the next wedding and hopefully it goes better than this one. Oh, oops, I almost forgot something really important. Really? What is it? <laughs> hey Lisa, are you there? I just wanted to have a quick little chat with you. I just thought you should know that you are going to have to pay for the repairs to the dress that I was wearing today. Wait a second, uh, my wedding gets ruined and cancelled and you're still going to make me pay? Please, can't we just never ever talk to each other again and leave it at that? Well, I will be more than happy to do that as soon as you pay for the damages to the dress. It was a $5,000 rental, by the way, and if you try and get out of this, I will sue you. Hold on a second. Are you seriously telling me that that dress that you were wearing was $5,000? But you just got it as a prank to pull on me, right? You really paid five grand for that? That's right. But don't worry, I didn't pay that much because I thought you would rip it. Though, you did. Please, uh, just give me a break. I mean, you probably just want $5,000 from me, don't you? No, this is really just about doing what is right and making sure that you pay for your actions. Wait a second, I remember now. You're that wannabe artist, aren't you? Yeah, I remember your brother crying to me about how it was his fault that you had to quit your dreams. But you know what I think? I think you're nothing but a hack. Your art is terrible, and you never ever stood a chance. You really have no idea what you're talking about. I just wish you knew how foolish you really look right now. You're the one who's foolish. Did you see the art in the wedding hall? It was a beautiful underwater scene. It was what someone like you could never see the value of. Your uneducated brain couldn't begin to understand its significance. Interesting, though, considering that the one who painted that one was me. Wait, what do you mean by that? I don't get it. I mean that Michael asked me if he could display it at his wedding, and I said yes. I actually really like that one as well, so I can't say you have poor taste. Thank you for the compliment, by the way. Wait, you're kidding me. Are you telling me that you were the one who painted that painting? That's right, and I'll be giving you the bill for my dress, by the way. Have a nice life. Wait, no, please. I give... You win. Uh, just make it stop. I'll change. We can be friends. Please, let's just put this behind us. Wow, you really work fast. The moment that you find out I'm a famous artist, you immediately try to cozy up with me. Though we both know that you had no idea you were actually complimenting me, but you did anyways. So thanks again. No, please don't go. Hold on, I can change, I promise. Yeah, that's going to be a no from me, but you go on and have a nice life now. Maybe think about the way you've treated me. Now everyone knows the horrible person that you really are. <laughs> After that, I blocked Lisa on everything and cut all contact with her completely. She was forced to pay for the wedding cancellation fees as well as her debt. Lisa had to take on more debt to pay all of those, and because she had never worked a day in her life, she quickly found herself spiraling financially. She tried to scam her parents to help her, and soon the whole family was in trouble, all because of Lisa's selfishness and recklessness. As for me, after the wedding, I went back to my house and have continued to pursue my dream of being an artist. Next year, my art is going to show up on an exhibition for the first time ever. I'm excited to invite Michael so that then maybe he can not feel so bad about the fact that I had to help raise him. And I'm still looking forward to giving him his wedding speech one day. Kelsey, are you planning on coming to my wedding? Although you happen to be Andy's older sister, I hear that you are a middle school graduate that plans on coming to my wedding. All the other guests will be surprised to see you there, I assume. I mean, it is expected that everyone that shows has some form of education, or at least a job worth working. 
Fern, how are you doing? It's been so long since the last time you and I talked to one another. What are you trying to say to me right now? I shouldn't have to explain myself for you to understand what this is all about, right? I know for a fact that your little brother is a doctor, and you know that very well. <laughs> yes, I am very aware of that, in fact. Hearing that a doctor's older sister never even made it past high school? That is very hard for me to believe, even coming from the man I love. <laughs> if that's really the case, though, then that must mean you are pretty much useless at everything, correct? Right now, I am really wondering why someone as skilled as Andy had to end up with such a waste of space as you, Kelsey. Are you making all those claims about me only based off the fact that I only graduated out of middle school? When you had met with me previously, was that the same way you judged me then? I could see that you looked very nice in that fine dress you had on. <laughs> but when your mother was going to explain your situation to all of us, Andy stopped her and told her to keep it quiet, right? That's when I knew that something very fishy was going on. I could tell that you were the one in the family that everyone sees as taboo and most likely don't like very much. So that's how you came to saying such unfortunate things about me. Well, you are very mistaken then. You just happen to have a misunderstanding of me and what I do as well as of my past then. I believe my brother was just being kind and making that whole meeting about you guys and not about me by having my mom shut up. Well, I'm sure people could say it like that as well then. <laughs> Andy knows that you're an embarrassment to your family, and that's why he restrained your mother from talking any further about you. I get that you guys are all trying to hide the truth from us. Fern, I'm sorry to say this, but you are very much wrong about that. That was not Andy's plan whatsoever when stopping my mom. You poor, poor thing. Not only do you have such a terrible education, but not even your parents spent any time raising you into a proper adult. Excuse me? What I'm saying is true, right? You never graduated high school, after all. I understand your family tried their best to cover up what a stain you are on your family's image by dressing you up in such a nice dress. But I could tell the moment I saw you that it was all a hoax. Are you sure about that? When you become someone of my status, it's pretty easy to tell the truth from the lies. I work with things like flowers all the time as an expert florist, <laughs> so I have a very well-trained eye for all sorts of things. The way you act is even a bit rough. I can see that. If you are planning on coming to our wedding, then I'd really enjoy it if you took some classes in becoming a responsible adult and learn how to have manners. If you're not able to do that for me, then you won't only be causing a lot of embarrassment for your brother Andy, but for his bride as well. I would like to ask you this, just out of my own curiosity. But what school did you end up studying at and graduating from to become such an expert florist as yourself? Huh? And why would you like to know such a thing as that? Is it wrong of me to ask? Even if I told you where I studied, someone like you would never be able to understand its importance. <laughs> I'm surprised you were even able to ask me what school I've gone to with such confidence as that. <laughs> Well, I'd really like to know where you've went before your wedding. You say that you are an expert florist and a teacher now at that. That must mean you'll be arranging your own flowers to decorate the wedding, correct? I teach things like making bouquets and things like that. But I'm also able to teach things like flower arranging for weddings and funerals. I happen to be from a school that's taught me all of that. So not only can I perform, but I can teach as well. <laughs> So if you're trying to ask me to help teach you anything about it, I'm afraid it's all too high level for someone who couldn't even make it out of high school. Perhaps you should try taking after your brother first, instead of asking me such brainless questions. Well, that didn't quite answer my question, but I'll be looking forward to hearing more from you at the wedding. And I hope on that day you'll be willing to tell me what school you went to. How's it going, Miss Never Graduated from High School? Have you finally been able to recognize the large gap in status between you and I? You really have arranged all these flowers here well. You're able to see just how amazing of a person and florist I am, right? To be honest with you, I don't see one bit of what you're talking about. 
I guess even this is too hard for someone with no education or upbringing to understand, huh? <laughs> Come on now, do you want to give it a try? <laughs> You're asking me to? You can go ahead and try arranging some flowers. I'm feeling confident about you. I happen to have a lot of flowers left over that you can work with. I might end up making you look bad, but is that all right? What? Do you really think the way you have all these flowers set up is the right way to display them for your own wedding? What are you talking about, Kelsey? <laughs> I was able to do all of the arranging by myself, and that's made my marriage to Andy even more exciting today. <laughs> I knew that something like flower arranging would be too much for someone who couldn't make it out of high school, nor was ever even raised properly by her parents. Then I suppose I will have to arrange some flowers for you today. Really? I'd like to see you try. Well then, allow me to put all my knowledge and skill into making up some very beautiful pieces for your wedding today. What the heck is that? What is the meaning of all this? Why were you able to make such a beautiful and outstanding arrangement of flowers? I just happened to use the skills I had to make up that arrangement for you. Of course, these are skills I learned while studying flower arranging in Japan at the Royal Palace there. What? Royal Palace? In Japan? I seem to have found that large gap you were talking about before, Fern. How does it feel knowing about it now, too? Has this completely ruined your mental state, making you want to quit your job as a so-called expert florist? What are you on about? Tell me right now! What do you mean you got to study doing flower arrangements at the Royal Palace in Japan? I happen to be a professional florist. And, as such, I was invited to Japan to study at the Royal Palace there in a three-month course learning all the different techniques they use over there. And the reason that my brother stopped my mom from ever telling you any of this before was to stop her from ruining your pride. Huh? Ruining my pride? Why? Because, unlike you, who is just a florist and a teacher of flower arranging, I am a professional in the field. And had you learned that I'm a very famous flower arranger, you might have taken that personally and lost confidence in yourself. So, based on timing and things like that, I was going to wait to tell you about myself another day. So, you guys hid all of that about yourself for my sake? I told you that already, right? My family wasn't going to just go all in on making you feel like you're worthless compared to me. We happened to really care about how you feel and wanted to make sure we did everything we could to make you happy. But I was told you never graduated from high school. That's why I just assumed you were some lowlife with no education. I don't get what's going on here. Telling me that you're a professional florist and things like that aren't making things easy for me. If anything, you're saving all that until now has really caused me to freak out. After I had moved from middle school to high school, I found out during an art expo that there was such a thing as flower arranging. I tried it out and found that I really loved the art and wanted to make a career with it, but didn't know how. When I asked the lady running the expo about it, she told me a lot of times professionals will travel the world learning all about the art of arranging. So during my second year of high school, I went and studied abroad in places like France and Italy, learning about flower arranging from the pros. I ended up staying out of the U.S. for longer and longer, and when I finally felt I'd learned enough to make a career out of it, I moved back and by that point didn't return to high school, but instead got my GED. And after starting my work and making a name for myself, I was invited to the Royal Palace in Japan, where I learned even more about flower arranging in their ways. What? That's what happened? Just know that I have my GED, so it's not like I didn't technically graduate from high school. So you're telling me you never did drop out of high school or anything like that? Well, not like your average dropout anyway. Now, can we start looking forward to this wedding of yours? How am I supposed to look forward to my wedding today after what you've done? I get that this is supposed to be my special day, but because you had to show off with your flower arranging, everyone's going to think I'm a joke. I'll lose everyone's respect in me and become a complete failure. At this point, there's no point in going on like this and having a wedding. I understand that this might all be hard for you, but it's still the day of your wedding. I think you should stand back up and give it all you've got to make this day special for you and my brother. Everyone that I teach is here at this wedding today. And right now, they're all starting to talk about having you as a teacher. You can relax when it comes to that. 
It isn't often that I take in students under my wing, and it's very hard for me to even accept anyone. I don't even feel as though me teaching them at the stages they're all at would do them any good. Also, I don't have the time to teach anyone at the moment, as there is too much going on in my life. Are you trying to say I have all the time in the world to teach them? I'm not saying that in a bad way, Fern. It just happens to be that you're a teacher, so it's part of your job. So please don't get the wrong idea from what I've said. I am not going to forgive you for all of this. I'm really not sure why you are so upset with me over what's happened today, but you are supposed to be the bride today, correct? You had only asked me to take a try at arranging some flowers, and that's why I did so. If anything, I'm thankful that the bride asked me to do some of the arrangements for her wedding today. So please, stop trying to blame me for yourself being upset when you know it's not me who asked you to do all of this. Well, even if I asked you to do all of that, I am not okay with what you've done. Fern, can you please stop acting like a child right now? Can you please place away your hard feelings towards me and just enjoy your wedding today with my brother? Why would this happen to me? What have you done? This is all your fault, Kelsey. Hold on, what are you talking about now, Fern? It seems you happened to become a little too jealous of my abilities and ended up hurting yourself in the process of getting back at me? You tried to come up from behind me and push me into your wedding cake, only for me to move out of the way last second as you sent yourself into it. You made all your guests laugh a lot after that one. I never did anything to provoke what you did, so this is all on you, correct? The wedding has been cancelled, alright? Why are you doing all of this to me? And why do you keep acting like I'm the one doing all of this to you? It just happens that my brother, my family, and yours, and all of your students that you invited are fed up with your childish behavior. And now the wedding is over because of that, right? What do you want me to do about this? I'm going to be honest that I can't do anything to help you out of the mess you've got yourself into now. If you had never done something as needless as make those beautiful arrangements, then I could have given a wonderful wedding to all my guests as a happy bride. It's all over now, Fern. So I think it's a better time than any for you to calm down a bit and think everything you're saying over. I don't care about calming down right now. If you had never showed off in front of me and all the guests, I wouldn't have had to freak out and come after you. But you went ahead and made such a perfect set of arrangements today. And I told you already that it's my job to make things perfect as I'm a professional and am paid to be. And this time, I really should have asked for some form of pay after all the work I put into those arrangements for you. But it's my brother's wedding as well, so I thought it'd be okay to provide that service to you all for free. Really, you just happened to not be as good as you thought you were, and so my flowers shined against yours. So please stop getting upset with me for doing what I've trained so many years to do. And I want to ask you to please stop teaching your students your form of flower arranging, as it's not good and they'll never be able to make money with it. I don't give a crap about the flowers anymore! And you call yourself a flower arrangement teacher? Shame on you, Fern! You know dang well that the wedding was the most important thing to me today. I'm sure that with the way things turned out, Andy is going to want a divorce now. It's all because of you that my whole wedding and marriage has been ruined. Fern, have you still not realized anything yet? Still not realizing anything? What are you talking about? The only one that's to blame for all of this happening to you isn't someone like me or my family, but yourself. Huh? What do you want to say to me? I was trying to make that very clear to you just a bit ago. You tried so hard to make yourself look good in front of me by gambling on me being bad at flower arranging. But after you realized that I was no joke and far more competent than you at this job, you fell short and began to freak out at the embarrassment of having all your students look up to me. And you have to realize that in doing all of that, you actually really embarrassed my brother as well, right? I didn't mean for any of- Even if you didn't mean to try and embarrass me and make me feel bad about myself, what's happened today is all because of your actions. Do you understand that? I don't understand a thing about this. The fact that my wedding had to end up being cancelled like this? My brother had every right to ask for the wedding to be cancelled after what you did to embarrass yourselves. You were trying to push me into the cake, but ended up falling into it instead. 
Your face wasn't only covered in loads of frosting, but your dress and everything was ruined and in tatters, right? Can't you see that by not canceling the wedding, things would have only gotten worse for you? I think Andy made the right choice here in having the wedding canceled. Now you should take from this that you have to stop acting like a spoiled brat and move on with your life. You shouldn't have to say things like that about me. My heart is already broken and you're going to call me a spoiled brat? Also, I understand that you think highly of yourself for being a so-called expert florist and teacher. But you don't have any of the necessary requirements to be a teacher in that art, right? I believe you really need to find a new job for yourself, as you are no teacher. And if anything, you're a scam to all your students. So please stop calling yourself an expert in things like that for me. Your way of arranging is not good, and I wouldn't even put it as being standard level. I think that if you really want to go into this profession, you should start by learning from a professional. But to become a professional would require me to spend money. What's wrong with me making a little money teaching students with how to do flower arranging my way? What you are doing is not okay, as it's just another scam! And I've already explained this to my brother so that he can think on it. What? Why would you do something like that to me? I'm just trying to stop someone like you from posing as an expert and ruining the image of us real professionals. And can you stop saying you went to school for any of this? I told my brother to make sure you find something else to do besides working in flower arranging. So, you can have a word with him now about how things are going to go for you. Kelsey, please. Can you please just forget about all this and go back to us both being kind sister-in-laws? I have finally been able to marry a doctor like Andy, and today was supposed to be the perfect day for me. I was having so much fun with everyone being so jealous of me, ending up in the perfect situation. Why did this have to happen to someone like me? I'm not sure why, but I'm going to say no to that. Why are you saying no? I'm asking you to please come back and be my sister-in-law. Even if you ask me in the nicest way possible, I can already tell you haven't learned anything from today and you only want to make yourself feel good. Now good luck fixing that whole mess on your own. I'm sure things from here on out will be tough for you, but I think you should start by finding a new occupation besides working with flowers. Now, best of luck to you when you have that conversation with Andy. I'll be wishing for a future where I'll never have to run into someone like you again. <laughs> In the end, the wedding was officially canceled and never was able to be finished. And as Kelsey was hoping for, there was never a moment after that day where her and Fern ever ran into one another again. Andy ended up learning a terrible amount about his wife and decided that it would be better to divorce her than sit around and wait for her to learn her lessons. And so, he told her that he no longer loved her and would be divorcing her. He wasn't going to ask her for anything in the divorce, as he already knew she didn't have much. But the one condition he stated was that she could never come around him or his family again after she was out of his house. Fern's parents also ended up giving up on her after her actions, and were not willing to listen to her complain and ask for help after she was divorced by Andy. And it wasn't just her parents either, but pretty much every person she knew showed no sympathy to her and didn't lend a helping hand. And as she sat there for months in her flower shop waiting for people to show up for months on end, she began to realize that there was no use in her being a so-called florist anymore, so she had to sell the shop and move away. She lost a lot of money not having any students or customers come in those months, and even selling the place didn't get her enough to break even on it. So when she moved away, she had to put herself into a very rundown apartment, with not a lot of foot traffic in the area to keep the rent down. Which in turn left her with few options for work, but anything would be better than her being a scam to all her students and paying customers. She was surely asking for it when she tried to play games and embarrass someone like Kelsey. But such heartless games as that will only end oneself in a worse place than they started. And as you can see right here, Fern ended up as the embarrassed one, with Kelsey coming out on top. I can't believe how lazy you're being, Sasha. How about you do some housework once in a while? Who do you think is the reason you're able to live in such a large six-bedroom house with a living dining and kitchen? Not everyone is fortunate enough to live in a great place like this. Why don't you do something for your family for once? Yolanda, why on earth are you having a go at me about this right now? I'm in the middle of working right now. There's no point to you attacking me like this. 
Well, I didn't know that you even had a job. Look, you're somebody's wife, Sasha. How about you do a better job of it? Do you even realize that you're able to live a good life because of my wealth? Oh, come on, Yolanda. I honestly don't understand why you're treating me like this when I do my best to be a good wife and worker. Besides, I don't think that's even remotely true. I do my part at the house. I knew you were going to start acting up like this. I knew you were nothing but a useless and lazy wife that takes no responsibility for her actions. You say that you've got to leave the house because you have so much work to do. You think that it's okay to just leave all the work that needs to be done in the house to someone else, am I right? If that's the case, why don't we make Dylan do the housework as well? He clearly has more time on his hands than me. Before you all moved into this house, I was still doing quite a bit of the housework. Ever since you've moved in, no housework has been done at all by any of you. Are you being serious right now? You're going to make Dylan do the housework? Are you kidding me? Don't make your husband do all the housework. That's such a lazy thing to do. You should be doing it yourself. It's your job. If you actually sit down and think about it for a little bit, you'll understand that you need to do more work. No, uh, huh? What the heck, Yolanda? Don't you think the ideal you have when it comes to what men and women do is a bit old school? If you actually use your brain, you'll know that I'm the breadwinner in the family. I think it's more efficient if others who have more time on their hands do the housework. It just makes a lot more sense, Yolanda. Ugh, it's very annoying when you talk like you're always right. I really hate that about you. I'm sorry? Why would you say something so cruel to me? I've done absolutely nothing to you. I hate everything about you, Sasha. I don't know what my son ever saw in you. You need to get out of this house and leave us alone. You're just a lazy housewife who doesn't contribute to the housework in any shape or form. Just watching you live in the house doing nothing is such an eyesore. It's so painful. Oh, okay. Please, go ahead and say whatever you like, Yolanda. You think you can just say terrible things like that because you're my mother-in-law? You know nothing of the truth. I think if you actually knew the whole truth, then you'd keep your mouth shut and not say a single word. What truth? What on earth are you talking about, Sasha? Tell me what you mean by that. Are you sure I'm allowed to say something? You want to know the truth? You've not wanted to hear me out before now. Just hurry up and tell me. I'm getting sick of waiting. You're such a horrible woman to deal with. You know for a fact that I would do anything to support the lifestyle of this family. To be honest, it's thanks to me that you're able to live in this house, Yolanda. Oh, come on, Sasha, don't make me laugh. <laughs> That's crap and you know it. Stop making such silly remarks and get back here early today for once. If you don't do some housework, I'll throw out all your belongings. You don't deserve to be in this house if you don't put in the work. Are you insane? That's just too much, Yolanda. It's so rude to make demands without listening to what other people have to say. I'm going to let Dylan know what's going on. If you won't listen to me, then at least listen to your own son. <coughs> Dylan, can you please do something with your mother? What she's saying is getting beyond a joke. I'm so tired of all the abusive comments and misunderstandings and all the delusional things she said to me. Well, she's my parent, right? I guess she can choose to say whatever she likes. I'd like you to tell her to choose her words more carefully when she's interacting with me. She even went to the extent to tell me that she hates me. Like, how could she do that when I've done so much for her? She even told me to leave the house. She was threatening to throw out my things if I didn't do any housework. Look, what she said can't be helped. <laughs> her emotions aren't something that I could control. I can't tell her to stop expressing her feelings, especially the love and hate ones. Even though I've got no intention of doing this, but you know that there will be trouble if I were to leave, right? Dylan, you know that I work so much all the time. I don't have time to do housework. Look, she's your mom. Can you at least try to convince her to treat me a little better, please? But if I do that, it's going to cause so much trouble for me. <laughs> If you're going to take this to a whole new level, why don't you just leave? <laughs> Are you serious? You think that I'm better off leaving? You think that's okay to do that? I'm getting so exhausted just listening to you argue with my mother. 
My mom was also saying that she hates everything about you. <laughs> to be honest, I feel the same way as her about you. I'm so tired of what's going on between the two of you. Are you being serious right now? Y you hate everything about me? Have you forgotten what I've done for your family up until this point? What I did was all for nothing, wasn't it? Well, now both my father and my mother are here. I don't really need anything from you anymore. I think I'll do just fine without you. <laughs> you really think you'll be fine without me doing everything for you? Do you really think you're going to do everything for your parents? Yes, so why don't you just leave us alone to live our lives in? <laughs> We'd be so much better off. My mother feels exactly the same way, too. Wow, is this real? Man, you really are a piece of trash, aren't you? You're such a pain in the ass. Oh, yeah? And what are you going to do about it, Sasha? Huh? You bad-mouthing me isn't gonna get you anywhere. <laughs> well, I just had no idea that you were such a thoughtless dummy. You never think for yourself. You just go along with what your mommy says. No. Now that I actually think about it, I had a feeling you were always going to turn out like her. I really can't deal with you and your crappy family anymore. Can you change your name as well, if that's alright with you? Why should it be me that has to change things? You're being such a pain right now. <laughs> no, it would be impossible for me to do all the work if you want me to leave. Please, just carry the burden for once in your life. You need to get all the right documents ready, but if you don't want to do it, I guess I've got no choice but to do things myself. It seems like such a hassle, though. But I get what you're saying. I guess we can finally end this and go our separate ways. You're probably so glad that this is happening, right? The woman who is so blind to everything is getting out of here. <laughs> I just heard what happened between you and my son. I heard that he was very successful in getting rid of you. Well, I suppose he was, yes. I was also told something that I thought was extremely rude, so I decided to leave as quickly as I could. You should have been leaving way before now. This is all your fault, and we're not taking any of the blame. Huh? What are you even talking about? You were too dependent on my son's kindness towards you. He hasn't said anything bad up until now. I guess you've been trying to get others to do what you should have been doing. You're able to make a living because I'm the one who does all the housework for you, isn't that right? You're delusional, Yolanda. You don't even make any of the meals for me, and the only housework you do is your own. Well, wouldn't it be better for you to do something about it? If you're going to be acting so cocky, the people around you aren't going to listen. Don't you realize how hated you are by us? You're so annoying, Sasha. Please, go ahead and say whatever you like, Yolanda. I know you're wrong. I really don't care about this anymore. I suppose I'll just do as you wish. If I must do that, then I will. It's finally happening. The trash is finally being put out on the curb. Would you quit calling me a piece of trash? I am not a piece of trash. I don't appreciate the rude comments. You're such a good-for-nothing scumbag, Sasha. Don't you see how much of a useless woman you are? Excuse me? Are you seriously trying to put me down right now? You've got to be kidding me, right? You're a useless woman that lives in a beautiful big house that my son bought, and you're not even grateful for this life he's given you. I hate everything about you, and it's time for you to leave once and for all. Now, get out! <laughs> yes, all right, all right, I get it, Yolanda, I'll leave. It's all over for this family anyway. <laughs> you need to leave immediately, and I'm not kidding around here. <laughs> of course, I totally understand. I've reached my limit of living with such an ignorant and stupid mother-in-law. You can't push me any further than this, all right? How about you go ahead and tell your pain-in-the-ass son that, okay? What on earth did you just say to me? Uh, don't you think what you said before was a bit rude? You need to apologize right now. Me? Apologize? For what? You know there's no way I'd do that, right? Uh, uh, are you kidding me? Who do you think was more rude in this situation, Yolanda? Comparing this to your previous rude remarks, this is nothing. My stupid comments aren't a big deal. I find them kind of endearing. <laughs> I'm your husband's mother, and you shouldn't be acting like this towards me. But I'm free to say whatever I like to you. 
Don't even think that I'll forgive you for your cocky attitude. If you're going to act like this towards my family, you can just leave right now. Haven't we already established that I should be leaving because of my so-called bad attitude? You know that it's all over for you and your family when I bail, right? Wait, what? Oh, what's that supposed to mean? Oh, what are you talking about? What's over? Well, if you don't know now, I guess you'll find out soon enough. Thank you for all that you've done for me up until now, Yolanda. But to be honest, what you've done until now has been an absolute joke. <laughs> you can't even be civil until the end of all this. You're such a terrible woman. I never want to see your face ever again. Wow, what a coincidence. That's exactly what I want to happen as well. I don't ever want to see you again, Yolanda. Can you do that without contacting me, I wonder? There's no way that I'd ever want to talk to you ever again. You've ruined everything for this family, and you've been officially disowned. You're nothing but a stranger to us now, and we don't want you here, so leave and never come back. Well, I'm glad to hear that, because I don't intend to come back. Since I was always such a nuisance, I'll just disappear. Please don't ever contact me again. I don't want to hear from you or listen to you complain about me anymore. Wow, this is hilarious. Are you insane or something? What do you want, Yolanda? Why must you contradict yourself? You say that you're never going to contact me again, but you leave me almost 300 messages on my voicemail? Don't you see how over the top that is? What's your problem, Yolanda? That doesn't matter right now. You need to answer your phone, for goodness sake. We've got no time to mess around at the moment. I left the house with a promise from you that you'd never contact me ever again. That's a better way to point it, right? Why should I be given orders like that from somebody who has treated me terribly? Honestly, I don't feel like answering the phone even if I was told to do so. Excuse me? Oh, what's that supposed to mean? Why are you still acting like a little brat? You should grow up and answer the phone like a real adult. I'm your mother-in-law, remember? You're supposed to obey me at all times. Oh, am I now? <laughs> what a joke. I'm laughing so much that my stomach hurts. Would you quit it so I'm not in pain? <laughs> I don't understand what's going on here at all. Why are you laughing about this when there's nothing funny? I love how you think you can still control me, Yolanda, but you can't anymore because you're no longer my mother-in-law. You did say that I'm nothing but a stranger to you now, right? Even when I left, I had a hard time holding in my laughter. <laughs> But you seriously need to calm down. You're causing me so much trouble over trying to contact me even though I left. Is this about the loan you have? Is that why you're trying to talk to me? Hold on, what? But how could you have possibly known about that? Uh, do you know how much the loan is on this house? Of course I know that. <laughs> Who do you think was trying to pay off that loan this entire time? I've been the one who's been paying for it. Are you kidding me? That, that must be a lie, right? You've been paying for it? Uh, how can you afford to pay such a large amount of money for this loan? Dylan and I were so shocked about how much we had to pay for the recent loan payment. It's extremely high. Uh, there's no way that we can pay for that. Um, well, when I went through the process of switching the loans and changing the house into Dylan's name, I'm sure there was a statement attached to the documents about the balance of the loan, right? Huh? Uh, are you for real? I haven't seen a loan that huge before. You're lying through your teeth right now, aren't you? It's pointless to lie like that, and I'm not punishing you that much. <laughs> Shouldn't you be checking your documents right now? It should all be clearly stated in the document. When I originally bought it, it was a joint purchase between Dylan and I. I've been the one paying for the loan ever since my stupid ex-husband turned on me. So I just switched everything over to him. Normally, when your in-laws move in, they should be contributing a little bit. You really should have paid so you knew what it was like for me. Wait, so my son had no idea that you were paying for the loan and that he made no effort to pay anything? You backstabbed him! No, I think he knew that he wasn't paying for it. He was so lazy with paying for things. I don't think he's paid anything towards the loan for a long time. Maybe he must have forgotten that when it comes to buying a house, you pay the loan and he just ignored his responsibilities? So who's going to pay back this kind of money towards the loan? There's no way that we can afford to pay for this by ourselves. Well, have you thought about leaving the house so that you don't have to? <laughs> it would really make things a whole lot easier. Excuse me? 
Did you just tell me that we should be the ones leaving the house? We have more rights to this house than you do. Well, I'm really not an expert on this kind of thing. Look, I changed my name on the house through the proper procedures. It was all changed from my name to Dylan's name so that I no longer had to pay the loan anymore. I don't think you can escape this mess, to be honest, so I guess you'll just have to do your best in paying for the loan. You telling me your problems isn't going to solve anything, so just do what you need to do. Is this some kind of sick joke? But it was your mistake for not disclosing how much we owed on the loan, and this is all your fault. You should be bearing some of the burden for this. We shouldn't have to pay for the full amount of the loan. This isn't fair. I see what you're trying to say. If you're going to insist that I do, maybe you should consult with a lawyer. But why should I need to do that? You should be doing what I tell you to do. You've made this a huge problem for my family. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't think any lawyer would try and help you with this. It's not my fault that it's all in your son's name now. You're the one that neglected to check all the documents, and look what you were getting into by staying in that huge house. If you insist on taking another step further, why don't you just sue me? But to be honest, it would be a waste of time and effort on your part. <laughs> what on earth are you talking about? Are you trying to provoke me into doing more to you? Why are you being like this? You think I'm provoking you? Why would I want to do that? You're a stranger to me, and I don't want anything to do with you. Please resolve this with your son and leave me out of it. I don't want to be a part of it anymore. You'll have to do something if you want to stay in that house. I don't get it. How is it that you have so much money to part out for all these things and my son has hardly anything? How is that possible? Dylan works really hard and should be earning a lot of money for the household. Well, that would be a good thing to ask your son about, Yolanda. The reason why I've got a lot of money is because I run a company. Wait a minute, what? Uh, that can't be. Uh, you run a company? All by yourself? Uh, how did I not know about this? Maybe it's because you never asked me about my work. Besides, I wouldn't have even told you in the first place anyways. Especially because of the way you were treating me and making me be more of a housewife. A few years ago, I inherited a company from my grandfather. It's not really that big of a company, though. But even then, I'm able to make a decent living and enjoy the things I love in life, so it's okay. I can't believe this. You actually run a family-owned company? So does that make you a boss? Is that right? I suppose I am, if you put it that way. But as soon as I became the boss of the company, Dylan lost interest in having a job. He quit his job and just became a part-time employee at some company. He hardly works as much as I do. I'm sorry, what did you just say? Are you telling me that my son Dylan, my brilliant son, is only a part-time worker? He doesn't work full-time at all? No, he is not a full-time worker. I think he only goes to work three days a week, if that. During his downtime, he would be doing housework. I'd be the one going to work almost every day and kept the money coming in. I guess that's how it turned out. It all ended after Dylan decided to invite his parents into our house, even though you shouldn't have been living there. You've been showing too much hostility towards me, and I just can't deal with you anymore. It's not fair on me. Just hold on a minute there, Sasha. I didn't quite understand what you just said. I had no idea that the situation was like this. Sasha, the fact that you're a boss of a company is a huge honor, and it's a very important position to have in our society. Why have you been keeping this so quiet up until now? I don't get it at all. Didn't I tell you why I kept so quiet about my job? It's because you never asked and didn't want to know anything about me. Obviously, Dylan didn't say anything either since he didn't want you to know that he's lazy and doesn't like working for his family. If you actually showed a little bit of interest in me, you should have asked and we might have gotten along a bit more than this, but it's too late now. So that's why you were able to live in such a spacious house. I thought that it was Dylan who bought the house and paid off the entire loan. Well, no, that would be almost impossible. He and I shared the loan and it wasn't paid off in full at all. Now it's solely his responsibility. That's just how it turned out. <laughs> but I told you that things were going to be over for the family, right? Dylan dug his grave. He can lie in it. It was all because of me that you were able to live such a carefree lifestyle, Yolanda. It was thanks to me you could live in our house. I can't believe that you never thought it was me who kept you in that house. 
It's hard to find someone who would believe you if you just said something out of the blue like this. It's not entirely my fault that I treated you the way I did. I really still can't understand how it all turned out like this. It's not fair. It's not my fault that I thought you did nothing. You weren't being truthful. Even if you don't understand it right now, I am telling the truth, and I've always been telling the truth. It was Dylan who was making random decisions without thinking about the consequences. I honestly think it was really stupid of him to do what he did, but that's on him now. This is over, and I'm done with this. I don't have anything more to say to you or to your son about this mess. But you can't just leave us in this situation. Oh, we can't afford to pay the entire loan off. Aren't you going to help us out? Help you? Really? Why would I want to help you now after the way you've treated me? You're just strangers to me now, so I can't just help out someone that I don't really know anymore. <laughs> Please, just do your best with paying off the loan. I'm sure you'll be able to be mortgage-free in no time. <laughs> or you can just move out. <laughs> How could you act so cold towards your own family? You can't just not help us and abandon us with this issue. Oh, please don't do this to me. I'm your mother-in-law. You can't just leave me in this situation. We need you back to help us. Please just come back here and forgive me and my son. I don't think I will. It was a dark part of my life, and you're just a stranger to me now. <laughs> I'm really glad I can say goodbye to an old hag and my stupid husband. <laughs> well then, from now on, just help out each other as mother and son. I think I just want to disappear from this situation. Isn't this great? I can disappear right in front of your eyes. It's honestly turned into the worst situation for you, so I'm going to leave you to it. It's your own fault that you got into this position in the first place, so there's no way I can help that, right? <laughs> in the end, Yolanda needed to explain to her husband and her son Dylan what was going on. They couldn't pay the loan together as a family, so it seems that they decided to move out of the house. Yolanda blamed Dylan for not thinking about the loan. On the other hand, he used the excuse that he didn't say anything because he was kicking me out of the house. He had no words to say to his mom, so all he could do was apologize over and over again. It was also a disaster for Yolanda's husband, who got dragged into this mess. Maybe they're all paying the price since they didn't know how to communicate with each other properly. I heard that the family are trying to find a place to move into together. However, it seems like the only thing they can afford at the moment is a run-down one-bedroom apartment with ongoing problems.